Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. We're going to have a look at the ultimate automation tool for Adobe Premiere Pro. This is Excalibur. All right, this is something new for Premiere Pro developed by the folks over at Knights of the Editing Table. This is my friend Ivan who's come up with this. We've already talked about another product he has called Watchtower, which updates your project panel to the stuff you add to your hard drive. This is a new automation tool that is way more than just macros. Macros are a series of keyboard shortcuts or commands. This digs deep into parts of Premiere Pro that you can't even find in a menu. It's things that Premiere Pro can do that Adobe never gave you a menu command for or a tool for. Excalibur allows you to do that. And you invoke it by hitting the keyboard shortcut, which you can uh, change. On Windows, it's Alt Spacebar, and then you can do things. Let's go have a look. So I've got an opening here with these three clips. And I would like to maybe have a dip to black. between these. Well, because dip to black is a transition and it's not set as the default, trition, default transition, I have two options. Uh, find it, right click on it, make it the default transition, select the clips and then hit Control or Command D. That's a lot of fishing around. Um, or find it and then drag it in uh, multiple times to these clips. Or select the clips, hold the keyboard shortcut, Alt space bar and Windows and Excalibur comes up. It's waiting for me to start typing commands and Excalibur doesn't have the whole word. It'll even use part words or just the first letters. But for this, I'll type DI dip and you see dip to white or dip to black. Now on the right, you'll see this little sub menu. So when I use my arrow key, go down to that, I've got several choices for transitions. Apply, apply just the to playhead, apply transition from the playhead. So these are things that you can't do with the typical transition. That's why there's a, two other options here, uh, which are legacy, apply it to the playhead uh, from playhead. So I'm gonna just choose the uh, top one here and I get a warning, and that's because this is typical. This is because the the bounds of the clips, uh, there's there's no trim area. And so this is fine for me. I'm going to duplicate that. But now I've got dips to black. All right. Perfect. Very easy. All right. Now, uh, a little bit later, maybe I, I'm, I'm working with someone and they said, can you remove all the transitions? Have you ever had anyone, maybe it's yourself, where you wanted to now remove the transitions? There's no remove transitions command in Premiere Pro. There is an Excalibur. Again, I'll select these clips. Excalibur, remove, and there it is. Remove, remove transitions. Boom, they're gone. No more dip to black. This was three clips, but imagine if this was 300 clips with transitions. The only way you can do that without Excalibur is clicking once, deleting again. Clicking once, that's 600 operations. Woo, okay, let's keep going here. What if you quickly wanted to scale this and you didn't wanna open up motion, call, it, call up Excalibur, scale, you tell it the amount, 150, boom, there it goes. And if you go to the motion effects, you can see it's been set. So something that you would do with multiple clicks is done here. And I'll show you in a second how I can do this to multiple clips at the same time. It's incredible. Okay, let's go to this section here. And let's say I wanted to change the speed of these clips. So select them all, speed, and I can change a speed percentage, 50%, and it doesn't change the duration, it changes the speed inside. Oh, that's nice. 
So each clip in and out point is, is in the same place, but the content in, inside is now slower. All right, let me undo. And you'll notice there's multiple undos. So you've got to remember that what Excalibur is doing is a lot of operations in the background. Boop, 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 boop. That was three operations to each one of those. If, if this was uh, 100 clips, then that would be 100 clips. So you can exceed the undo amount uh, in, in uh, Excalibur by the amount of times it, it's done. Uh, okay, so let's try duration now. Duration. And you have the option here of ripple trimming. So I could change the duration and it's going to ripple everything on the other side. So you can tell it whether the ripple trim is on or off. We're going to leave that off, but, but let's leave it off and set the duration at one second. So now they're one second each. And if I ripple trim that, then they would pop over. How about this one? Open sequence. These are the, the sequences that I have in my project. So if you're someone with a lot of sequences that are buried in folders, open sequence can get you right to the sequence you want very, very quickly. Okay, let's talk about nest individual clips. So if I wanted to nest these clips individually, Typically, I would have to select a clip, nest the clip, select a clip, nest the clip, select a clip. A lot of work. Nest, individual. All I had to do was type N space I, nest individual clips. And that would nest individual clips all in one con command. And it organizes them in, in your project bin. I didn't do it here. I just wanted to show you where it was. All right. How about move clip start to playhead? So if I've got a clip here or clips, move clip, move clip start to playhead. And that moves the clip to the playhead. And that would also be true if I had multiple clips on multiple tracks selected. And you could move the clip end or the, the clip start to the playhead. Very good. All right. Let's talk about warp stabilizer and Let's create our own multi-command here. So I want to stabilize this shot here. So stabilize this guy. See, it's moving a little bit. And I want to add a marker telling me that this shot has been stabilized. So in the window menu, extensions, Excalibur, Excalibur settings, this is where we can create our own commands. And you can see how deep this is. It's unfreaking believable very, very deep. So I'm going to add a user command and I'll call this WS and we'll add a command and I'll, I just have to type in it, warp stabilizer, add a command, which is A space M, add marker to selection. And the marker is stabilized and we can set whatever color it is. I'm going to choose red. And by the way, I could add a keyboard shortcut to this. Very good. All right. So WS. Okay. Remember that's our clip. We'll invoke WS. There's my command. You can see the marker was added and it's starting to run warp stabilizer on that clip. And while that's going, we can continue on over here. If I wanted to, I could select this and add marker to selection. And again, I get to choose the color and what it says. That's what's flashing up here. That's the color. And um, add dark music. Boom, right in there much, much easier than adding it and then trying to type a number in or dragging that out. That is fantastic. Okay. Um, DAI. So we can even duplicate a sequence, duplicate, duplicate and increment. So duplicate and increment 
will duplicate the sequence and it will put the other one so that it would be an exact copy of this and it puts the other one in an archive folder for you if you like to duplicate uh, that sequence. Okay, so that one is now stabilized for us. Very good. Okay, add marker, increment and save. I'm not going to do this, but I'll show it to you. Increment and save will take your, your project, increment it by number one, so dot, uh, 001, 002, however uh, the last numbers are, and it will close this one and open another project. This is something After Effects does. I do this in Cinema 4D and my music program Cubase all the time. So Premiere Pro, I wish it had it. I do this manually all the time. File, save as, dot zero zero two, close the, the current one and start working on the next one when I want to increment and save. Export media, you can export uh, clips. Now, the one thing you do have to, uh, to do, export media or export selected clips or export frames. Export frames at markers if you want. So you do need to have a, a custom preset. This doesn't use the presets in Media Encoder. You just need to save a user preset in there uh, to do that. All right, so now let me get into some of the other things. This one, I swear you're gonna freak out and love this. This is a long time wish for Premiere Pro, and that's something called fill frame. Here's the example. We've got a bunch of images, and they're all different aspect ratios, and they have black outside edges, but you just want them to be full. Watch this. I'll select all. Fill frame. Oh, sweet mama, every one of them. But let me show you how cool Ivan is over at Knights of the Editing Table. What if we want a nice little move on these? Hmm, I think he's created something called Panimation. Let's do that. Panimation, there it is, and it's done. So now each one of those is moving nicely. Each one moving in nicely. <laughs> oh, great. All right, one more that I wanna show you, and that's um, this. Let's say that I've got, well, I do. I have 16 individual clips. They're all full-size HD frames in an HD timeline. I want all of them to be 25% scale so I can now position them like a Zoom meeting kind of thing. Oh, that's a lot. Of, even if I was going to use paste attributes, I still have to select copy and then select all and paste attributes. Or with Excalibur, da, 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 scale, 25 Give it a second and it scaled all 16 clips for me. Boom. And now I can, and if I turn on my snap, and have them start to snap in position, it's so much easier because they're now all the same size. Oh yeah, and guess what? If I wanted to go back, select all scale, boom, I scale them back. Position, I could change the position information. So if I wanted that one to be in a position, I can set the position right here. So let's say 540 by zero, boom, and it moved up there. Ooh, I took a guess at that 540 was uh, not enough to, to move that in the right place, but you get the idea. Excalibur is, this is one point freaking O, oh, and I think Ivan has done a remarkable job. Something similar by someone else exists in, in After Effects, and people love this in After Effects, uh, this kind of thing. Now we have it in Premiere Pro. I know I'm gonna use this every single time I, I need to do something quick or something to multiple clips. Because remember, you can never do something to multiple clips inside Premiere Pro. One at a time or use Excalibur, shing, shing, to slay the dragon. All right. 
Hey, thank you, Ivan, for giving us an amazing tool. There's links in the description. There's great uh, documentation on Knights of the Editing Table where you can see everything this is doing. It's even more incredible. Remember, this is version one. He's gonna keep uh, innovating on this as he does with Watchtower. Incredible solutions uh, here from Ivan. Thank you very much. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you have found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You wanna support us some more, you can do that on our website, on videoreveal.com. There is a shop there where you can donate once or monthly, any amount you want. We've got some free goodies there for you and some other stuff that you can buy. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to make your life easier.